Hello, and welcome to part four of the Flappy Bird Neuroevolution Coding Challenge. Now, you might have thought, you might have watched part three and thought, ah, oh, look, it's done. Finished, coding challenge complete. But I got so many excellent comments and suggestions about how to improve uh, my neuroevolution simulation that I decided to come back and attempt a part four. Woo, this is part four. So, oh, oh by the way, and, and before I actually came back to attempt, I did some work to test out some of these ideas. And here you can see, this is a version of it running with some of these improvements. And you can see that I pretty much have a little bird here that has beaten the game as it stands. Um, all right, so let me close this out. I'm gonna go to this GitHub uh, issue where I kept track of some of the comments and put them here in a list. So these are the things that I want to add. And to be honest, I might do this last one in a part five, but let's see, at the very least, what I want to do is, uh, apparently a very important feature of the game is that if the bird reaches the ceiling or the floor, kaput to the bird. So I want to make sure to implement that. Um, there's an issue, a bug in which uh, the pipes, the, by detection for the closest pipe, uh, I'm only detecting it up to the point where it reaches the bird itself and not as it passes it, and that, that's sort of causing some issues, as well as, oh my goodness, Y velocity. I mean, let's think about this for a second. I have this diagram over here, right? If this is my bird and this is the gap approaching, right, what if the bird is already moving up or what if the bird is falling, da falling down? This would make a very big difference in whether I should jump or not. Because if I'm moving up, jumping might cause me to hit the top, the, the top part of the pipe. So I shouldn't jump. But if I don't jump while I'm moving down, I'll probably hit the bottom. So having Y velocity, whether I'm already moving up or down, as part of the inputs into the system is going to create a much smarter bird. And it makes sense that a bird playing the game would know if it's moving up or down. So I feel like that's a fair input. So let's go and add those things. So first, let's go with um, adding the Y velocity. Let's go in reverse order. Let's go with adding the Y velocity as an input. That's probably the most interesting thing in terms of the actual algorithm that's going on here. So I'm gonna go back to my code, Woo, zoom back in. I'm gonna go to the bird. The bird, as you recall, has a brain. So the brain previously had four inputs. Top and bottom of the pipe, X position of the pipe, Y position of the bird. Now, I want five inputs, and I don't know, let's increase the number of hidden neurons to make it a bit more sophisticated. I like a sophisticated bird. Now, then we're gonna go down, and we're going to look here, aha, these are the inputs. The Y location, the top, the bottom, the X location, all normalized to a range between zero and one. So now, all I need to say is th this dot velocity, Let's make that an input. Now, this is a bit interesting here. Now, let me just make sure that's the variable, right? This dot velocity. Now, here's the thing. When I wanted to, when I use something like the X position as an input or the Y position, there's a distinct, <laughs> right? There's a distinct way to normalize that value to a range between zero and one. The Y values go between zero and 480. Divide by 480, I have a number between zero and one. But the velocity is a bit more mysterious. First of all, it could be negative, it could be positive. What should I really do here? Let's try something arbitrary. <laughs> Let me try dividing by 19, no, 10. So, you know, in the end, I just need an input. Maybe it's okay if it's also negative. I want it within kind of like a smallish range. But I think if I divide it by something, um, that's probably gonna do just fine. Oh, and this should be inputs four. So in that sense, I now, if I go back and run it, I should have already a smarter bird. So let's let this run for a little while. Let's train it for a little while. And we can see, oh yeah, this is the number of generations. I've gotten up to seven, because it's already kind of pretty smart. Let's slow it down, and we can see, uh, we can see there it is, uh, figuring, it sort of figured it out already. Well, this, the, some things are a bit different from this and the other version. But you can see that adding that Y velocity has already probably improved it. Okay, so the next feature I would like to implement, now that we've added Y velocity, is let's try uh, fixing the pipe's closest detection. So let me explain what's wrong. So if this is the bird, and this is the pipe, and this is another pipe, I have an algorithm that says, oh hey, this is the one I should look at. But if there happens to be another pipe over here that's technically closer, I want to ignore it because I only care about the pipes that are in front of me. 
um, but still it's there on the, in the canvas because it's part of the animation. So I have an algorithm that already deals with that, but unfortunately, right, as soon as the, if the pipe is here, it's still gonna read as the closest, but if it's actually like here, right above it, as soon as the front of the pipe passes the bird, it's gonna ignore that pipe. And so if it sees another one coming, it's gotta go up, it could kinda get, it should really still consider that pipe. It should consider that pipe all the way until the back of it passes. I think this is gonna be an easy thing to fix. So let's go and find this part of the code. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Um, in bird, bird, somewhere in here, in think, this is me finding the closest pipe. And as long as the distance between the pipe's x location and my location is positive, that's something that I wanna look at. But let me actually just find the distance to the back of the pipe. Oh, this is so easy. Pipes.x plus pipe.w. So that, that w is the width of the pipe. So I should be able plus pipes index i dot uh, w minus this dot x. So this should now work. This is actually the location that I'm looking for, which is behind the pipe. Wonderful. All right. Do I even want to run it again? Do I care? Let's run it again. Let's speed it up to train for a little while. And there we go. And let's just Let's still run, we can see, there we go. Oh, poor, poor little flappy bird lost the game. All right, so now, what else do we have to do? If I go back to my list, we now, ah, fix when the bird hits the bottom. Now, I'm told by the chat that actually, in the original game, hitting the ceiling is allowed. So let's only add the bottom, I guess. <laughs> um, so if I go into the bird, there is a function called, uh, I believe, well, there isn't actually. <laughs> so hold on a second. Let's go to the sketch. I've forgotten how my code works completely. And let's go and see here. Ah, all right. So this is the loop where I remove birds. <laughs> but the problem is this loop is inside the pipes. So do I really want to remove a bird here? I mean, I don't know what the best way of doing this is, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another little quick check down here. I'm going to use I. And I'm going to say, if birds index I, uh, what should I say, off screen? Off screen. Then here is another reason why I might want to remove that particular bird and put it into my saved birds array, which was a, admittedly a bit of a silly solution, but it works. So I need to write a function here in bird, which is called off screen. And I'm just going to return, return this dot y is greater than height or this dot y. I can't resist having it die if it hits the ceiling. I cannot resist. Let's just add that for a second off screen. So let's see if this works. Um, and let's do this. So look, they're at the bottom. Ah, you know what? There's an issue here. I think somewhere in here, ah, right. I have this extra code to constrain them within the screen, which is sort of silly. And now I can remove that. They don't get constrained. They just die. So you can see they're hitting the bottom, they're dying. So now let's speed this up and let's let this go. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Okay, I have returned. Looks like we've got a pretty good one here that doesn't seem to have any problem beating this game. Lovely, look at you go. Look at you scrappy little bird flapping your way through this course. Beautiful. So I think we've made some pretty good improvements here. Um, I don't know, let's make the game a little bit harder <laughs> just to see. So what did we have now in pipe? Oh, the spacing is 175. That is way too easy. So let's make it 125 and let's give a little refresh here. And I will be back again in a minute. <laughs> All 
All right, I've returned. This bird looks pretty, pretty, pretty good. Let's see how it's doing here. Yep, doesn't seem to have any problem with this 125 spacing. What do you think? Can we push it a little? Just push it a little, just a little. 100, 75, 80, 50. Ah, I don't know, let's try. Let's flip a coin. Whoa, look at that, look at it go. Oh, it's such a good little bird there. All right. Oh, this is a bad idea. 75 is gonna be way too hard. All right, dare I say that it's working? It's hard to tell with it so sped up. Let's actually slow it down. There's actually two of them going. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's a bunch of them in there. Let's just, let's, let's look at it at a more, huh. Well, seems pretty reasonable to me. All right, so this is pretty exciting to see. You know, I probably, I, again, I don't have the exact physics of the original game, so there probably could be some tweaks there. But as you can see, just really that Y velocity, if I take out that Y velocity input, well, let me just show, I think the Y velocity is probably the most important fix that we made. So I can really quickly, just in the bird itself, I can just, let me just set the Y velocity to zero. So basically it's not getting it anymore. It's as if it's a constant input, so it's sort of become irrelevant. I don't think it's going to be able to solve this now. So let me give it a little bit of a, a run here for a few minutes. All right, so I've let this run for a while, but you can see like it's just like, it's all over the place. It's not able to sort of fit itself through these pipes. Um, there, there is a good point in the chat that I probably, with that, that I haven't really, that I've made the sort of amount that it jumps very, very low. So it's able to kind of like perfectly position. It's almost as if it's just like finding the exact spot. Um, so, you know, one thing I might just try, let's put it back. Let's put the velocity back. Let's make it a little bit harder for the bird. Let's give it a bit more of a powerful jump. Let's give it 16 instead of 12. This will make it a harder game for it to play, I think but let's see if we can do it. So you can see, I don't know, is my hit detection looks like it might be a little bit generous. <laughs> I think the collision detection is a little bit generous. You can see, I don't know, the, the, uh, maybe, maybe the lift. Okay, so I'm being told there's a very important feature, which is that if it's moving up, it cannot jump. It can only jump if it's moving down. So let's see if we can add that. Oh boy, I did not know that was the case. So that, the way that I would add that is this is where it chooses to jump up. And so I suppose, I mean, I guess it just, I might as well render the decision irrelevant, right? So, and if output zero is greater than output one and this dot velocity is moving down, which means greater than or equal to zero, okay? So I'm allowed, I'm not allowed to go up unless I'm already going up. Let's try it and let's, let me, just for the sake of argument, let me put this back to the, the pipe distance, let me put that back to 100. <laughs> this was gonna be such a short video, now it's so long. And let me speed this up and I shall return. <laughs> All right, there's some interesting discussion now in the chat as to whether that's actually a feature of the game, but I did implement it and I'm only letting it jump while it's moving down and it still seems to be able to kind of get through these, which is pretty cool to see. I do kind of like the quality of it right now, of what, it's, what it looks like, so that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so who knows? I'm gonna take that feature out because apparently that there's, it's unclear as to whether that's actually a feature of the game. Um, I don't feel like that needs to necessarily be a feature of the simulation, but I will leave it in as a comment um, in case anyone wants to reference it. Um, all right, so now, I feel like this is in good shape, but what I want to be able to do, right, what I want to be able to do is let's say, I mean, this isn't a very complex problem. I'm able to kind of like train a bird to play the game very well, very quickly. But if I had something that took a really long time to train, I would want to be able to save the model. And by the model, I mean a copy of all of the parameters and values and weights and variables and things that are in that bird's neural network brain. 
I want to save a copy of that so that I could load that later. And luckily for us, there's a nice way of doing that. So that will come in part. Now it is, won't be part five. Oh, this is a part five coding challenge. See you there. Oh.